All right, guys, welcome back to WCS Season 3 here for the Europe Premier League. We now have our first place finisher from Group F on the line. It is Titan. How Titan, you doing? baby. Hey, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> What's Sorry. up, Titan? Congratulations, man. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so happy to advance so my emotions. Ah. I know. I We talked about it before because uh, last time we talked to you on the phone in Season 2, you were so happy to make it to the round of 16 then, and I thought you'd be the same this time as well. Thank you. All right, so uh, coming to today's games, uh, just in general, um, the the series against Nurture was a little bit back and forth, a little bit, uh, a little bit crazy. How did you anticipate the series going uh, initially? Uh, and also, can you talk us through the the building game number one as well? It was uh, a little bit interesting. I'm a little bit stupid because this build, <laughs> I I wanna make like make uh, uh, how to say fake immortal push. Mm -hmm. With two, two upgrades, but then I make one colors, second columns, then blink, and then I should don't uh, lost my sentries and may good uh, take good recall mm -hmm. to my main. But I was fail with this, and that's why this game was so stupid. Okay, this was some special. And then the series overall, uh, after losing that first game, did you anticipate still bringing it back? Or did no, you... no, it was okay because this map is very bad. Yeah, okay. I, I don't like this map and I didn't think of to play this game. I want to make some macro games, but after first game, I stop this switch. Mm. <laughs> So you, uh, you, you said you were, uh, you know, lots of emotions going through. Uh, can you describe the emotions? What, what, why are you so happy to make it through again? Do, did you find this group difficult because coming into it? Because before this, I think it about StarCraft. If I not advance to WCS, then I will take StarCraft like a hobby. Oh. But now I, I try to play as same as I played before. Mm. All right, awesome. Well, mm. good to have you still playing StarCraft. As uh, you've got, you've got a lot of fans. People like your crazy style, Titan. Let's just say that. Uh, I, I very like. Unique. It's good because next time I will much more crazy moves. Ah, oh, hello. Uh, <laughs> Titan has got some of his own special tactics ready for the round of 16. Um, I mean, coming into the round of 16, I, I know you really wanted to do well last season, uh, and to be honest, you weren't even that far away from making it to the round of eight. It was a very mm, close series against very. MC. Uh, that surely must be a goal of yours to try to make it to the round of eight this season. My goal is uh, season finals. I hope oh. I can do ah. it. Awesome. That's a, that's a really strong goal uh, to set for yourself. Yeah, yeah. We've seen a lot of big names so far in this uh, tournament fallen, so it, it may be easier to achieve than last season yeah. with the players that have fallen. But of course, everyone in Europe is uh, an awesome player. Very, very strong. You're right. Uh, so now, just a, a general question. How much time do you uh, dedicate to practice, say, per day? I mean, it probably changes mm. from day to day, but how much time do you dedicate? Look, because of gym, I can't practice like 10 hours per day, and mm. it's not interesting for me. For me, interesting to play maybe 15, 20 games, but every day, and maybe three, four hours watch some streams. Mm. Like, I have two screams, I can one time look at two protos. Ah, and, it's, okay. and when you have two scream, it's more fun. Do you, do you <laughs> want to tell us which protos you like to, to look at and study from? Hmm. Is there anyone in particular? So if, if every Protoss that, that usually streams is streaming and you could pick two mm -hmm. to watch, who do you go to? Uh, I don't know who have more interesting matchup, maybe. Mm, I don't okay. like look at PVZ because it's always blue race, nothing special. Oh, I like a look how some play. His play very differently, like darks, blue race, something else. Some Allens. I like Watch Hero, but last time he don't stream a yeah. lot. I guess he's preparing for WCS as well. So, all right. Yeah. Uh, any last questions, uh, Sean? No, I'm uh, I'm all good here. No? Just uh, happy to see Titan in the round of 16 <laughs> again. That's all I want to say. Yeah, doing very well, and uh, it's always nice to have you here, Titan. Any last words from you, Titan? Huh? Any last words? Oh, thank you, my sponsor, of course. Mm -hmm. Sponsors: Rocks Kiss, Kaspersky. You send computers and plantronics awesome. and lock screens. Awesome. And also, I want to say thank you, all my fans. All thank right. you very much. 
Cool stuff. All right. Well, yeah. thanks very much, Titan. Thank you. <laughs> see All you. Right. Guys. We'll see you in Cologne in a couple of weeks. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Get ready for the sparkling water. Oh, God. <laughs> sparkling water. Get ready for the sparkling water, Titan. All it's right. coming your way. So that is Titan advancing on in first place into the round of 16. Again, it's always nice to hear from Titan because he's yep. always such a cheery fellow. He is oh, a happy nice. individual. And uh, that way it was really, I didn't expect that to come out from him. Um, I'm happy I asked that yeah. question now. Why there was a lot of emotions going through today. And uh, if you didn't get that from him, he basically said that if he didn't advance from today, he'd pretty much take a step back from StarCraft and turn it into that's a big. hobby that's rather big. than play it properly. So that's uh, pretty big. So very good news for Titan to make it through and to obviously keep him in the scene is, you know, trying and trying and trying to break in to get to the top levels is hard. And sometimes yeah. it takes its toll, but he's there again. He's made it through the round of 32. He's into the top 16 and hopefully, as mentioned, can make it to the season finals. That's where he wants to be. Let's hope he can do so. And now, countdown's already begun here, guys, for our next series. It's going to be Shuttle going up against Nurture. One of these players is going to fall down into Challenger. And Nurture, we were... Uh, you know, we were saying before that we thought that he could bring up a strong performance uh, throughout this season, but it really does show the level of competition, even in the round of 32. The fact that a player like Nurcio here, as well as Shuttle, are in this position where one of them falls down into Challenger. That's right, and which one will it be, and which one moves on to fight in the final match? We'll find out as we are now ready for the loser match of Group F here in the World Championship Series. And spawning up to the top right, we have our red Zerg representing Acer as well as Poland. He is Nurcio. And down to the bottom left-hand corner, our blue Terran representing Korea. He is Shuttle. All right, I predict a 2-0 Nurcio. Mm. I, I really feel that Nurcio is really strong um, in this matchup. Yeah. He's been performing really well recently. I've seen a lot of his random stream games and uh, in some random online tournaments, even team leagues, he's looked really, really good yeah, yes. in this matchup. And uh, why not when he has a Skype chat with Innovation? <laughs> yeah. And uh, of course, MMA. Yep. And uh, pick their brains on what's good and what's weak. And he's really been put it into. Uh, into focal point in recent times. I think I think you're dead on the money there. I mean, it just no, Acer picking up innovation in itself is that's a really cool pickup. That's really strong. But then the whole team benefits if they do have that kind of a team mentality of the camaraderie that does come sometimes from teams. You don't see it in every team. Some teams kind of just, uh, you know, don't even practice with each other that much or whatever. But Ace is certainly a team that does talk a lot. I mean, people like Nurture and Scarlet, we know, talk a lot. They have Seller there as a coach. So there's a lot of communication between those players. Yes, there is. And hopefully that's really pushed Nurture in the right direction for him to improve his career because he is a good player. He is a good player and he's worth around a 16 finish, to be mm. honest. But uh, so is Hasuobs as he, uh, you know, had a top eight last season. And we'll see how things are going to shape up here because that matchup, of course, would require Shuttle to lose this series. We came into the day today, or at least I did, and I thought Shuttle, yeah. We underestimated him. All right, Shuttle, uh, you're playing from Korea. It's not going to be easy for you. These players are good. Mm. I'm not too sure if you can make it out of the group, but he did put a good effort against Hazuobs. Yeah, he did. So if he's able to put that same effort against Nurcio and pull something out the bag and maybe upset Nurcio, because I'm sure Nurcio's thinking he's the clear favorite in this. Nurcio always would think that. Yeah. Well, now he uh, Nurcio has to pull this one out of the bag. It is Whirlwind, and it is cross positions. So Nurcio's going to feel pretty mm. darn comfortable. Uh, but as is Shuttle to a certain degree for a while, as he's got his command center on the way, I would like to see him go triple command center, actually. Yeah, I think he positions. will. I think he will. Um, it's it's the standard, actually, three command centers. Yep. It, it's, it's different, and it's weird if you do something away from three command centers. So uh, we'll see how this shapes up. He's still on one gas, and we'll be looking to get that factory down soon enough. But uh, I definitely feel three command centers from him. You really have to be as a Terran player on top of your macro if you're going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe, uh, with three command centers. I feel felt that in, com in a couple of his games against Hazjols, maybe he was a little bit low on his barracks count, and he wasn't at that many units, and he wasn't building a lot of units all the time. But you need to be on top, man. If you give the Zerg a you know, 30 seconds breathing room, Man, they can do a lot with 30 seconds, trust me. When yeah. it comes to building drones, saturating bases, and getting a lot of bailings out, they will take 
the freedom and opportunity that you give. Uh, they certainly will. This bunker finishes up at just the perfect time to greet these Zerglings as they're not going to push too much further than they already did. The factory's on the way as well here for Shuttle. Uh, so uh, from this point on, we'll see where he wants to get up to. He already has a little bit of gas coming in. Could go for Widow Mine, but at the same time has the opportunity to go for those Hellions, which I would love to see just plow out across the map and try and bring some pressure to Nurture. Yeah, I mean, you usually, I mean, it depends on how much pressure you want to put on and if you think you can maybe run past the defense and it depends on how many Hellions you make. Some players build four, then go over to Widow Mines. Some players build four, then lift the, the factory up and put a barracks on it to mm -hmm. get ready for the extra barracks that come on. So it really depends on how much you want to go for and what your intentions are in this game. Shut up with the third command center coming down and the tech lab going on for the on the barracks for stim. Whereas Nurtio's just set very smartly, very nicely across two bases, four queens, and now the third hatchery is about to come in. This is very normal from Nurtio to push his economy a little bit further. Um, otherwise, of course, he would fall quite far behind when it comes to the three command centers, which he's probably expecting. That's truth. And actually going for the double uh, evolution chamber here before speed even starts. So this is how comfortable Nurtio feels right now. Does see the Hellions moving out to the middle of the map. Uh, and he's going to be defending this with uh, Roach Warren positionings. And th this is a really cool wall by Nurtio because that queen... The three queens can block that off and, uh, you know, just go back to inject as well if they see those Hellions move away. That's right. Good wall off there in case there were any run buys uh, from Nurtio. Not sure what style he's going to play, whether it be Zergling or Roach. We'll find out now as the Evolution Chambers have completed. Because uh, he could use either, but he is going to go to melee, which means he will play a Zergling, Bailing, Mutilus style. Mm. And look at this. After four Hellions, uh, we do see uh, the switch up with the barracks. Yes. So the factories come over uh, to build another reactor for the other barracks. So basically, the production is always going to be online. There's no downtime for the barracks because they're already on reactors. Very smart from uh, Shuttle here and also keeps his money low, which is very important when going for three command centers like this. Yeah, especially double engineering bay as well, just to continue trying to catch up with his opponent. It's not the greediest double engineering bay of all time, uh, as it could have been even before the barracks, but aside yeah. from that, uh, you know, he's, he's just going to play catch up in those upgrades and he's doing a little bit of damage to this base as well. So not too bad from shuttle thus far. Yeah. And then the factory is the slag of reactors, goes mm -hmm. around just producing reactors everywhere and puts down another one for the starport. And we're just seeing the pretty standard setup here. And the reason why we don't see engineering base so early is because you don't need them super early on anymore because you actually prefer to get more units out and then get the starport out to get the, you know, the 16 unit and two medivac, eight yeah. units per medivac to go harass a little bit, kill some creatures must put a bit of pressure on and then just build up and take a third base behind it. So everything so far completely normal from Shuttle and very crisp so far. I haven't really noticed any supply box or mistakes. On the other hand though, pretty normal setup from Nurtio too. He's at a decent drone count, 64. He's building yeah. a couple of roaches. Actually going with quite a high roach count now, nine. What we could end up seeing from him with more uh, overlords coming in is a bailing nest soon. And he could go for a roach bailing attack on a massive economy. Yeah, on a pretty good economy here. He's got mm. a lot of overlords. He's making a lot of units here. The only thing missing is that bailing nest. And of course, without the bailing nest means you can't get bailing speed. So, I mean, Roach uh, Ling is okay as well, but hmm. It's certainly an interesting play that we he's, could see come out. He's trying to maybe break the third base as well, too. He doesn't necessarily need a Bailey Nest if he doesn't want to straight out blow the game up. Unless he's doing something like just completely relying on a Roach mid game and then going to transition onto a Hive super fast and try and get ult to Ultralist. But that would be really difficult to do against yeah. Shuffle. I, I feel he's definitely looking to punish the third base because all, all Terran players uh, take their third base really fast with really low units. Like, the 16 units are no match to a bunch of Roaches and Zerglings here. And Roach control here begins, and actually really nice micro there by Nurtio, saving some of these Roaches whilst yeah. the other ones do the damage. I He's remember losing the, a lot of bio. I remember that the Winter Mines have not been made because the, the, the factory's been a slag uh, with reactors, right? So, yeah. very nice play here from Nurtio. I really like the timing he's trying to hit into here, and he will break this third base. Beautiful play here by Nurtio. I, I thought that's what this would be, and... It, it's worked. It, it's worked very nice. Look, combat shield yeah. isn't ready. 1-1 one, one wasn't ready. Bunkers are coming down. And behind this, Nurtio's uh, in great position. I'd take a fourth base right now. I, you can do anything from this position. He's such yeah. a good position. You really can. 66 army supply against 40 here. And Shuttle's having a bit more of a tough time breaking out of his natural more than anything. Starts his armor, tries to get his 2-2 himself. But that's a little bit late here. Especially since Nurtio's just plowing forwards here with his own 2-2. And I I kind of feel that, you know, if he does want to transition on really, really super fast to Hive, if that's what he wants to go for, then 
having this boon, this this advantage of pushing your opponent into the middle of the map and really shutting that down, that's amazing. But he's going to go for a massive, massive attack with Zergling Bane. Like. Yeah, he could go and try, try to finish the game. Because of the advantage he's put himself in by delaying the third base, he can now look to finish the game. Because look at this, there's 2-2 two, two upgrades near completion, and he could just end the game with a big Roach Baneling attack. Yeah. That that's is one way he could go down for. But with the Hive coming in, it looks like he's going to take his advantage into the Hive and to Ultralis really early on in yeah. this game. Exactly. So now here, yeah, Nurcio just holding this back once again. Did he get a Widow Mine during oh, that? Oh, beautiful. very clever. Nice move there, straight into the bio. So they take the splash damage as well from the Roaches being impacted by those Widow Mines. The bio will push this best eventually, but look, 154 army supply, uh, 154 supply against 100. Nice attempt mm. at a drop, but it's not going to work out. Yeah, Shadow's dropping in two places right now. The natural and the third base, not going to work out too well, because Nurcio can use a lot of units to defend here, but he's morphing in a lot of bailings, and it looks like he is going to go for that attack as planned, even though the infestation pits down. Do two uh, upgrades are done, and he's got a <laughs> lot of units here. And he's just oh. going to come crashing through. Just He could just win the game right out. A beautiful game from Nurcio. 40 Banelings uh, who are pretty much morphing in there. He's going to have so many out very, very soon. Uh, and now that centrifugal hooks finishes just in time for him to push him forwards as well. He doesn't even need to break the wall down. He's actually just got his Zergling sat above this supply depot. Bunker's going to try and hold on to this, but they're so close together. Those Banelings crash on through. I'm just, I'm just looking at this yeah. thing. That's absolutely perfect. This is actually a perfect game from Nurcio. Yeah, there, that you was, go. there was no, nothing to say at the end. Perfect game. GG, Nurcio takes game number one. Scary. Very, very, very classy game there from Nurcio. Very hmm. powerful game. And, and that, that just screws up every Terran player's normal build, what Nurcio just did. There has to be changes now from Shuttle, yeah. because if he does the same again, he'll lose exactly the same way. He has to change it up going on to the next map. And the, uh, the scary thing is, is that even if that attack doesn't work, he has his infestation pit down back home. He starts morphing in the hive. Ho ho, get ready to deal with 3-3 three, three Ultralists and Chitinous Plating. A really scary build for Shuttle to deal with. Very yeah. scary. Very, very crisp play from Nurcio. That was just absolutely wonderful. Um, you know, that's what happens, right? We talked about it earlier. When two players both play amazing, you have these epic games. When two players play bad, you have these epic games. And when one player carries great in the other, it's just like one-sided. And that's what it was. But it was great from Nurture's side of things yeah. to see his plan. And his timings were so good. The way that he hit the third base before it could be defended. He expected the push out. He pushed that back and then stopped the third. He then came in with a follow-up when 2-2 mm. was ready. It was just... There was, there was no room for the Hellions to do damage. The wall was really strongly held there as well. Uh, so now Nurcio going on to game at number two. Derelict Watcher is our map. This is another map where Nurcio can try and exploit that third base positioning with, you know, something like a Roach style if he would want to go for it. Smaller map, though, could allow those Hellions to get over there a little bit quicker depending on how Nurcio would want to deal with that. So there are... Some uh, advantages and disadvantages here on the Relic Watcher. Yeah, I'm expecting Nurcio to, to look out for any attacks that would come his way. Mm. So I expect maybe even a drone scout from him to check for a two barracks in this game. I expect him to send in overlords to try to look to see if there's barracks added on before a third command center and all these things in this game. All right, well, let's jump into game number two as we now have Derelict Watcher being on the map, spawning up to the top right here. As our Red Zerg currently one game up, he is Ace and Nurcio. And down to the bottom left, as our blue Terran representing Korea, he is Shuttle. That is one of the worst games to lose if you're a Shuttle. Mm. Uh, that's, that's like the worst game to lose because you got completely outplayed. It's not like there was anything wrong with your build and strategy. It was that Nurture just completely counted it. Yeah. Completely it was a counted tough one. it. It wasn't close. And the funny thing is, is Shuttle's build was the same build that even players like Innovation uses, which is why that was so scary for Nurcio. That build was perfect. Like, Nurch Shuttle didn't mess up. So now he has to approach this game like, all right, what do I do different now? Do I keep on adding on more Hellions? Do I switch to Widow Mines earlier? You know, you know, he's got to approach it differently. So I'm interested to see mm. his uh, approach. And look at this, one Barracks? Before Command, so he's going for a Reaper expand to start this game off. That's yeah. already a big change. And I'm interested to see in which angles he uh, you know, changes from here. 
it would have, imagine if Nurture had actually, after watching that first game, imagine if he'd have had uh, a group, you know, a little bit more Terran heavy as opposed to Protoss heavy. Nurture would have, if he plays similar again, if he plays as strongly again, uh, his ZVT right now is phenomenal off the back of that first game. That was perfect. And I, I'm really expecting Nurture here just to be like, all right, he knows now that he can't do the same again because I will crush him again. Yeah. So Nurture is, is probably in a mindset where he's like, all right, what is he going to do? So look at the overlords already. Nurture is not, weirdly, not worried about a two racks. It is a little bit dangerous the way he's playing. Uh, but he sent his overlords already to get straight into positions. Usually some Zerg players leave an overlord on the natural to scout if there is a bunker and SCV mm. being built. But what he's doing here instead is using a drone to scout for that instead of the Overlord, and making sure that the Overlord can get into prime position early enough to spot the differences that he's expecting from Shuttle. And that Reaper is going to head out in just a second here for Shuttle as well to see if it can do anything. But Nurture's control is normally very kind of consistent, so he shouldn't lose too many drones, if any. As uh, We'll probably just throw down a Reactor or a Spore if one of them would end up going low. But the Zerglings and Queens do start here as well. So this Reaper is now on a timer. Yes, he is. He is. He uh, has a little bit of opportunity to do something, but not much. We shouldn't see any drones, especially the way that Nurture is playing. We shouldn't see any drones uh, be killed. Mm, yeah. So how well are you going to do, Mr. Reaper? Uh, behind this, f Factory does end up starting, as well as Command Center as well. So no committal to a second Reaper, uh, as uh, Shuttle realizes that that's probably not end up going to work. And uh, just poking around for now. Maybe just do some tickling damage to these Zerglings. But other than that, with the Queen started at the natural as well, it's uh, going to be difficult to do much of else. Yep, yeah, he's not going to get anything here. All right, so aside from that, Nurture just sending on those drones down to this mineral line. And uh, what are we have actually going on? We have the standard follow-up of uh, Shuttle to go into the Hellions mm. by the looks of things. Again, it could go Widow Mind. Oh, hello. As expected, right? Oh, As yeah. expected, a complete switch up. Complete switch up. Uh, I, I I mean, if I can read this, then Nurture is 100% going to read into this mentality yeah. that, that he's into. So, um, the Overlord's trying to get its way there. Nurture is going to be on top of things, I think. I don't think he'll skip Zirkling speed this time to get faster upgrades. I think he'll get Zirkling speed mm. this time. Just because it's a map that the Overlords are in a, in a more difficult position to scout out. And the way that the barracks are pushed here... And, He's looking to try to win the game really early on. Without adding on the third barracks, he's going to get stim faster. He's, he's going to actually keep up with Hellion production in this game. And he's going to try to join up with Hellions and stim and a bunch of Marines here to try to do a big attack to Nurture and try to kill a third, yeah. kill, win the game, kill everything he can. And if Nurture doesn't spot it, then of course he'll be in bad position. But I really think that Nurture is going to read into this mindset from his opponent. He certainly should do. Or he might just say that, well, you know, it worked so well for game one, might go for a game two. But you don't want to fall into that strictness as... Well, Shuttle, it, you're right though about these barracks placements. They're very, very hard to spot. Even if you had overlords in the, you know, just above the natural or to the right hand side of the main. So this is a, this is a tough one here. And uh, Nurcio, he's going for his double upgrades by the looks of things again. And the layer, ah, uh, there we go. There's speed. Jeez, I would yeah, have been I scared knew, otherwise. I knew he'd get speed first this time. Mm. Uh, Nurture is reading into this, and you know, a lot of the times, uh, uh, viewers or even or even Shuttle is going to be like, "How does he know that I'm doing this?" But it's just a mindset. You can yeah, you can absolutely. read into players what they're thinking due to how the games go. Like it's just a skill you develop over playing a lot of games. Um, and and I think Nurture's doing this really really well. He's got a fast layer, that means he's going to get a fast overseer. Yeah. He's going to go in and scout with an overseer because his overlord can't get there in time. Everything's perfect. We'll probably see a bailing nest arrive quite early on in this game as well. Probably after he scouts with the overseer, I think here. Um, but still, you know, really, really solid game right from Nitcho. Queen's just trying to push this away in the middle of the map. Widow Mines actually start up with this as well. So uh, Nitcho needs to accommodate for that uh, as his 1-1 begins. And uh, yeah, I, w I would also love to see the Bane Nest a little bit quicker here from Nitcho. He's got his third base up uh, a little bit easier than I was expecting. The Hellions and Reapers really didn't deny that location. They haven't even gone down there to have a look around. And the Spire starts as well. Huh. Actually, I, yeah. I, I'm expecting an Overseer um, to try to go in here. Uh, if he doesn't go for an Overseer, this could still work from Shuttle. Even though that... Uh, yeah. I mean, there's no Overseer. Nurture is going to scout the third base with his Overlord. I'm trying to see what he's looking and trying to build around what he's looking at. He's seen nothing right now. This could be Blue Flame Hellions. This could be what we're seeing. It could be three Command Centers. Without an Overseer scout here, Nurture is going to poke up the front door with a Zergling. Sees nothing. 
Isn't that weird, Nurcio? Starts mm. Link production now. Sees Medivacs boosted out. Yeah, there's two Medivacs. Uh, were spotted by that Ling, as you mentioned. So uh, now what is he going to get up to? What is he going to try and deal with this? He's got the Bane Ling that's about to finish as well. So uh, centrifugal hooks would be quite... Uh, a little bit later, though, which is important. He knows there's something's wrong in this game, so he's not going to build drones. He's building overlords and units because the bunker wasn't even ready. Why wasn't the bunker there and why weren't there units? Unfortunately for him, he does lose that overlord. He has a lot more on the way, though. But uh, with the bailing that's finished, he's already building bailing, so I'm finding it hard to see this work. Remember, through all this, a third command center comes behind, but there's no engineering base. This means if this does not deal damage, Nurture will have 2 2 before even 1 1 finishes. That yeah. is absolutely incredible. Ooh, making a bit of his gas here to the Mutalisks as well. I guess they technically will try and chase down those drops, but he has to keep his, a lot of his Zerglings alive as well. They're going to just flood on forward, so this army is not big enough to deal with those. Oh, especially with those Brainling connections. But that was more. More so a bait than anything else because here's the real drop. Yeah, it's gonna do a little bit of damage here as well. The Zerglings do on flood on pack. That one widow mine at the back here could do a little bit if he's care not careful, but he's moving away from it, so it's not gonna enter the fight at all here. The mutalisks. Ah, uh, he just connects with the Banelings and cleans it up. And he killed three drones. Uh three drones. Oh, he's actually got a oh, okay, a single Hellion and a Marine on the third, but that was dead. Uh, and now this is a position where Nurture just needs to get back into gas in his main base, and uh, he doesn't know about that Widow Mine, which uh, you'll need to deal with. Yeah, it killed a, a drone as it went into the uh, line there, but yeah. he's going to try and burrow again, and the Widow Mine does now burrow. Yeah, next gas should be for 2-2, actually. Uh, he's getting overload speed uh, because there's no uh, a Viking pushing him away. But uh, he cancels bailing speed and gets plus 2 attack and will get plus 2 melee. And he is so far ahead. He may just try to close the game up with a 2-2 timing again. Yeah. Just hit when your opponent's weak with upgrades because he knows this style. You have to sacrifice a lot to get stim all those units and medivacs out so early on. Yeah, slightly different tech route, but in the end, it's going to still do a lot of damage. He's going to fly over to that third base, have a look around with those mutalisks, maybe try and dive into these positions, but there is uh, Widow Mines placed strategically here for Shuttle to try and deny that, so he, sh he should be okay in that regard. Um, do you think Nurture plays a, a long super game, or do you think he tries to close it up when uh, we see Shadow I, try to take a third? I mean, especially after game number one, it really kind of showed exactly how willing Nurture is to go for the push, right? So yeah. uh, I think he does go for the push. Okay, I think so. Uh, he Actually, did he get bailing speed now? No, that's one thing that he needs yeah, if he's he going to go for this it, push. Right? He cancelled it to get 2-2 and then may have forgotten about it. Yeah, um, well... It's still going to be a strong push, but not as strong, obviously. Without that centrifugal hooks, it's a very, very big deal. Oh, but he might catch a medevac. Oh, just barely does not. On... Wow, nice boost away. Yeah. Almost lost a mutalisk. But he's taking the gases straight away at this fourth base. Probably will take them straight away at the fifth as well. And then his gas income is going to be insane. And he's going to have a million mutalisks every second. And Shuttle's going to have a hard time dealing with that. Yeah, shot a little bit of supply block Ooh, there. Ooh, hello. Hit with a widow mine, but he also picked it off at the same time. Didn't really. I think he lost maybe one mutalist there. Yeah, and uh, took a scratching on either arm. But uh, thankfully for these uh, mutalisks, they are Wolverine, so they can just replenish very, very quickly. All right, so one one is about to finish in thirty seconds, and also in thirty seconds is two two for Nurcio. Oh dear. Um, Bailey speed has started now. And I only see an attack coming from Nurcio. He's already picking off Widow Mines. <laughs> he sees his opponents weak with units. Um, I expect a thousand Bailings to be morphed anytime soon. Yeah. Uh, and here they already start. Yeah, they begin. Nine are on the way. And uh, he's a little bit m gas starved. But as long as he's, you know, I mean, he's got this gas up to the fourth as well. So his gas income is going to be looking phenomenal here. Almost up at a thousand uh, per minute. Even engaging into the missile turrets as well. Just trying to do a little bit of damage. Uh, but Nurcio is very far ahead, and I, I don't know how Shuttle going to deal with this. If he needs Shuttle a lot does of deal with it, because he's got a drop to the top right, which actually can kill the hatchery. Yeah. Uh, he, he may not know all the units are out the position, but he can kill the hatchery here, but I don't think Nurcio's going to give a damn. Uh, Nurcio's going to say, whatever, dude. Whatever. Whatever. Whatever, dude. And he just charges straight on in. Might lose a little bit to these Widow Mines, but a few of them do end up dying off before they even engage. And 152 supply right now against 130. Since Fugal Hooks is not done yet, but the Widow, uh, the Banelings just choo-choo straight on in and going to try and hunt down some of these Marines. SCV's pulled off the line, and Nurture ah! hits a timing which is almost impossible to deal with. This is... Carnage! 
completely one-sided from Nurcio in game one and game two. He's got 26 Marines still on the map somewhere. They did kill off that base as well as dropping in the main, so he's trying to claw this back, but uh, one tank, he's going to get killed off very soon. I, he just doesn't have enough to deal with the mutilists that are sat on top of his production, right? So I, uh, I suppose so. I mean, Nurcio's been so careless in this game, it's like he's not even yeah. trying. He's let his main base get dropped, he's let his spawn and pool get attacked, he's let his fourth base be killed, which is obviously fantastic for Shuttle, but he's left... Shut all look at this. He's lifting everything up. Run away. Run away. Run away. Run away. Because, uh, again, these mutilists, man, they're just having an absolute field day. They are on a school trip, and uh, they're uh, enjoying life. They really are. Nurcio here. He's just going to kill off a lot more workers. And Shuttle, I... Oh, it's such a heartbreaker for him because he keeps bouncing between Challenger and Premier over and over. And GG, Nurcio advances on. And commiserations to Shuttle. I want to see yep. him go forwards one time. Oh, well. Sorry, Kolaris, but he's not round of 16 material, unfortunately. Not, yet. Uh, not yet, but Nurcio currently looking like he is. And now we have a pretty cool game set up coming for the final match, which is, of course, yeah. where you get to pick the winner. And if you pick correctly, you get to have the chance to win this mouse, which I've been using, or not, maybe not this version. Uh, maybe if you ask nicely, you can ask him for this version. Uh, but you get the old choice, of course, to win that by just selecting who wins this next map, Nurcio or Hasrobs. And as you can see on screen, that's all you need to do is tweet hashtag WCS and tweet hashtag Rocket. Get that chance. Awesome. We like to win free stuff. Free stuff's good. Anyway, guys, we have another free series on the way for you here. And it's going to determine who moves forwards in second place in the round of 16. Will it be Nurcio or will it be Hasu Obbs? Join us after the break.